What's going on traders? Welcome to this week's Forex Forecast. If you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button and don't forget to check out the Patreon or the YouTube membership for my daily chart analysis. I hope to see you there. All right, first looking at the US dollar cut reports for the DXY. The past week, the banks added 2,000 longs and they added 1,251 shorts as we are contacting this daily area of supply. If you remember last week, I talked about how you should be very careful buying at this supply zone, uh, looking considering the DXY, and clearly you should have been based on the move as we've seen a move down. So now it's all a matter of, is this zone gonna break, which it's very possible it could. Then we will have a daily uptrend on the dollar, and I'll be much more bullish than uh, I am right now. So waiting for that to happen, and if it doesn't, it's probably gonna push lower here to this daily demand, which could hold price for a bit too. So keep an eye out for those two zones. Uh, the first indication um, that price is gonna drop lower on the dollar is a removal of this demand zone here. Um, a good indication that that daily supply zone is going to break is if this makes a new high and this zone reacts perfectly. So definitely keep an eye out for that four hour zone uh, as that is what's going to be trying to hold up price. All right, on to Euro USD. The past week, the banks added 2,800 longs and 18,000 short positions, which is leaving them basically 52% long and 48% short on the Euro. Uh, we're basically in between supply and demand right now. If this daily zone gets broken on the Euro, I'll be interested in trading the daily four hour, one hour time frame. I will be looking for one hour pullbacks. Um, and if you want to get my zones, make sure to check out my Patreon. You can get those zones because if that happens, you know, price can break lower. Then you can hop over to the one hour chart and find the nearest zone. And that's most likely what I'll be taking. Um, other than that, on the euro, we still have this beautiful four hour downtrend. So I'm not really bullish until that zone is removed and that trend line. Then I will start to look for longs uh, on the four hour chart. And that will be basically confirmation in that daily demand and monthly demand. It's a pretty aggressive setup, but I think it could work. So like I said, just waiting for this momentum shift to happen. And if it doesn't, um, like I said, I'm gonna wait for this low to be removed here on the Euro. And then I'll switch over to trading the daily four hour, one hour time frame. So those, that is what I'm watching on the Euro USD right now. All right, on to the Aussie dollar. The past week, the banks added 11,000 longs and they actually added 13,000 short positions, which leaves them 82% short on this pair. Uh, so it's pretty telling, I guess, for what the banks are trying to do with the, the US dollar pairs here. So same thing as the Euro, we're basically in between supply and demand right now. Um, actually, no, the Euro is in demand, but we're basically in the middle. So I basically am not trading the daily four hour one hour time frame at all right now. If you come to the four hour chart, in the live stream we were talking about this um, with some of the people in the stream, we had that confirmation move up, but I don't like this demand zone, I don't like this demand zone that price is in right now. I think that there are a bunch of stop losses under here, so I would not really be interested in going long in this area just yet, because I think we could see some manipulation to the downside to stop everybody out. That's just what I could see happening. So I'm much more interested in buying the Aussie as it breaks that supply zone up there. And when I'll switch to short, uh, bias is when a new low is formed here, and then I'll start to look for four hour, one hour, 15 minute setups on the Aussie. But for right now, I'm not really seeing anything that's tradable in this pair. Uh, for all you day traders out there, there's a one hour supply zone we're reacting off of right now, and then there's some one hour demand zones below that you could look for confirmation in. As you can see, it's, my zones work pretty well, um, so you could always look for a confirmation in these zones here. So just wanted to show you the one hour if you're a day trader. All right, on to the British pound, GBP USD. The past week, the banks added 7,700 longs and they added 12,700 short positions. So now they are 50 50, 50% 50 short, 50% long on this pair. If you look here, we're in a daily demand zone right there. Um, it's kind of similar to the euro. I don't really like a zone like that when it's at the low. That's just my personal opinion because uh, I do think there could be some stop losses under here, kind of just like the Aussie. Um, with that being said, I'm not really interested in going long or short right now. For me to go short, I'm gonna have to basically see a new low formed, which would create a beautiful daily downtrend. Then I'll be trading the daily four hour, one hour time frame. 
Uh, if you look at the four hour chart, we did have some decent confirmation, but I do believe it's my personal opinion that this zone is gonna break and we're gonna see a push lower. That's just my bias for this week, but you could technically be looking for 15 minute confirmation coming out of this four hour zone if you're a day trader. Uh, just be very careful if you do, maybe just look for a one to one or two to one. Uh, one hour chart, there's really not, not a lot of clear zones at all either. So right now I am just sitting on my toes waiting to see this daily chart to see, you know, is price gonna break this zone or are we gonna start going higher? If it starts to go higher, we'll have a four hour and one hour trend, which then I will trade the four hour, one hour, 15 minute time frame. All right, on to USD JPY. The past week, the banks got rid of 3,000 longs and they added 1,100 short positions, which leaves them at 78% long. Uh, we are reacting off of this very, very tested daily area of supply. I believe there is a lot of stop losses up here that are going to be triggered. Um, but looking at this daily chart is very weak, so I'm actually over on the four hour, one hour time frame right now. I am looking for 15 minute pullbacks in this market right now. So far, I do not see anything of quality that I would have taken. So now what I'm waiting is for a new high to be formed, looking for a continua continuation pattern and looking for a pullback to get long on the 15 minute chart. So that is really the only time frame sequence I would be trading right now because uh, that daily is very choppy. Right now we are in a one hour area of demand that's not the best area of demand, but it could be what fuels price to the upside, which will give me that 15 minute entry opportunity. Uh, but it is possible that we do see a nice push lower here. I'm just gonna have to be patient on this one, uh, but it is one that is on my watch list for the four hour, one hour, 15 minute time frame sequence. All right, looking at USD CAD, the past week the banks added 871 longs and they got rid of a big 17,700 short positions. They are now 71% long on this pair. And that's as we react right off of this daily supply zone here that, we, that I talked about in all of my weekly Forex forecasts. Uh, so definitely go back and check those out and watch me talk about those uh, for sure. Um, so it's kind of a weird chart in the daily, not really trading the daily four hour, one hour. I am interested in getting in short possibly once this four hour supply is removed because then we'll have a nice four hour downtrend and we'll have a one hour downtrend uh, where I will then look for, I'll hop to a 15 minute chart and I will look for basically something like this where we get a push down and then uh, sells at the nearest 15 minute supply zone as long as it is a high quality one according to my own rules. So that's basically what I'm waiting for on USD CAD right now. I don't really see any opportunities for swing trading right now. It's very, it's just very sideways, right? And if you're a day trader, this is a tested four hour zone. So I don't really wanna be buying in here and just, that's just my opinion. There is a four hour supply zone above. You could definitely look for 15 minute confirmation in there. I think that that would be fine. Uh, but like I said, since the higher time frame charts aren't really showing much, maybe just look for a one to one or a two to one if you do decide to look for confirmation in the, in that zone. And if you don't know what confirmation is, check out my tips playlist. Link is in the description. I have a video on confirmation trading and exactly what I look for when doing that. So definitely check that out. All right, looking at the Swiss franc, the past week the banks added 400, or sorry, 4,600 longs and they added 1,200 short positions, which leaves them at 69% long and 31% short this pair. We do have a daily uptrend on this pair. It's one of the only US dollar pairs that we do have a daily uptrend. So I'm currently waiting for the four hour to begin uptrending. If you come to the four hour here, price is sideways. So what I'm waiting for is for this four hour to make a new high then I'll be looking for one hour pullbacks to buy to continue trading with that trend. Uh, if you're a day trader, this was a nice 15 minute confirmation zone to look for in there. Uh, one of the good reasons to be a Patreon member for sure, because you could have looked at my zone and look for confirmation in there. So definitely check out that Patreon for that. Um, but as far as the one hour and the four hour goes, I don't see much right now. Um, you could look for confirmation in this daily area of demand. I don't think it's very high odds though. Uh, I think it's better if price starts to go up for longs and if this daily demand gets broken you know, during the week, then I think we're probably gonna go much lower, uh, but it's all gonna depend on the DXY, the dollar index, to see really the, di the direction of the US dollar. 
All right, on to gold. The past week, the banks uh, got rid of 10,000 longs, and they added 9,700 short positions, which is leaving them at 73% long uh, on gold. In the live streams, we were talking about this daily demand zone here. It didn't really accomplish anything, so it's not the best demand, but we did see a nice reaction off of that. So if you did get in long and take profits on a lower time frame, good for you. Um, there are some daily area of supplies up here that could hold if price does decide to push up on gold. But right now, I don't see really any trading opportunities considering that this uh, daily is kind of just going sideways right now. It's not really trending. So as far as the daily four hour and one hour entry goes, there's really not much. Um, I am interested in the four hour, one hour, 15 minute time frame though, because we have a beautiful four hour downtrend right now, very clear. Uh, we also have a one hour downtrend right now as well, right? So what I'm waiting for, I have an alert set right here, is I'm waiting for a new low to be formed, and then I'm waiting for 15 minute pullbacks to take uh, in that downtrend on the four hour, one hour, 15 minute time frame. And I will be looking for that during the live stream next week, so definitely check that out. I will be going live during the New York session, and this will be... Uh, gold will definitely be on my watch list to get in short if price pushes lower. So that is what I'm waiting for on gold. Uh, just kind of sitting on my toes for now. I'm not trying to hop in early or anything. Uh, I am just waiting for a nice push low. All right, last but not least, oil. The past week, the banks got rid of 6,000 longs and they got rid of 7,000 shorts, which still leaves them at about 77% long. We are coming up to tested weekly supply. Um, but the daily has showed a shift in momentum now. We have a very clear shift in momentum. I wouldn't call this an uptrend yet, um, but I'm actually very interested in buying oil on a 15 minute chart, just like uh, a lot of the other pairs right now. You're seeing a theme because we have a four hour uptrend. We have a one hour uptrend. So I am on the 15 minute chart looking for pullbacks. I haven't seen anything yet. I had a, I had a basically a buy signal right here. Uh, but price never really filled me uh, filled me in, uh, so I couldn't really get filled on that. Uh, but it's all good. So now what I'm waiting for is a new high to be formed, and then, like I said, the theme of this video is 15 minute time frame entries. I'm waiting for a 15 minute entry. But right now, I know that it's best for me and my strategy to, you know, continue to wait uh, for a new high to be formed, so I can get a very clean entry on the 15 minute time frame. Um, I would just be careful of all this overhead supply, but my ultimate target for oil is uh, at least $80 a barrel. I think we're going to get there uh, probably within the next couple months. That's just my opinion, probably even quicker. Um, so that's basically the time frames I'm trading, uh, the 4-hour, 1-hour, 15-minute. All right, everyone, thanks again for watching this week's Forex Forecast. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and hit that subscribe button as well if you don't mind. I really appreciate all the support. Let me know in the comments down below what pairs you're looking at this week. And, you know, maybe we can get in touch and you can send me a chart and let me know what you're looking at. I always like looking at charts. So with that being said, let's have a great trading week and let's make some money. Cheers.